everyone, Dave Landry here, and this is Trading Simplified. This is our 11th episode. Wow, time is flying by. So what do we talk about? Well, I got to thinking about it. We covered a little bit of everything so far, but I think it's important for me to go back and explain to you why I picked certain setups and what I was thinking at that time versus just showing you, hey, I picked this one and look how great it is. And then we have two new mystery charts. I'm going to go through as many of those walkthroughs as we can get through over the next 20 something minutes. But before we do all that, I do want to show you the mystery charts first. If you're looking for where to find me, you can find me at davelander.com slash stock charts. If you put the inf your information in, don't do it if you're watching the show live because I haven't set the slides up. But if you watch the recording of this, you can download my slides. I tend to cover a lot of information and I know that you'll need a little follow-up information afterwards. And I'll also give you some introduction material, and I'll give you all three of my books for free. If you do have to reach me, you can reach me at davelander.com slash contact. All right, let's take a look at a couple of mystery charts real quick. This is our first mystery chart for the week. Stock has bottomed out nicely and has recently pulled back. It does have a bit of a cup and handle look to it. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't want to give it away because a couple of you guys out there have been pretty smart figuring out the mystery charts and congratulations to you. Here's another one. Nice trend higher and it has a TKO move. And I'm going to walk you through some setups, which will explain what I'm seeing in these charts. Now, as I said earlier, I think the why versus what I picked is vitally important. I get this question a lot like, Dave, what were you seeing when you went into that setup. So just to give you a little insight into my mindset. Now, before we get into all that, it's kind of a diet industry warning because knock on wood, since I started this show with stockcharts.com, I've been on fire. But I do want to warn you that results not typical, but as you will see, certainly possible by practicing what I preach, looking for trends, looking for TKOs in those trends, looking for some of these IPO setups, which we'll get into down the road. Here's the current portfolio. I have the mystery charts blacked out, but they are down there. And I do have working orders for that. So again, it's not always this great. If it was, you probably wouldn't see my fat arse again. But this is what can happen if you're patient over the long run. Now, there are times where I don't have any setups whatsoever. Now, it took me 14 hours in a course to teach what I consider proper stock selection, but there are a few things I could show you and will show you today that can put you well on your way. So keep in mind that it takes a while for me to teach it, but it can be taught. I do believe it can be taught. Now, one of my clients said, well, it's kind of more caught than taught. And I kind of agree with him in, in some cases, but if you just listen to what I'm saying and actually go out and look for it, then I think it can be both caught and taught. What I would encourage you to do is study some big winners. Is there any pattern, rhyme, or reason? And sometimes there isn't any. Sometimes a stock just takes off without a pattern, and you just have to ignore those. But I've probably looked at, and I forget the math, it's either 10 million or 20 million, it might even be more stocks over the course of my career. It's about 2,000 stocks a day, and I do that every day and have done that for 20 something years. But if you want to learn, I would suggest studying success, counterfeits, currency detectives. They don't sit around and study a bunch of monopoly money and say, yeah, this orange $500 bill, it's fake. They actually go in and look at what makes a real dollar bill real, and they can spot a fake from a mile away. So you, learn, you have to learn how to recognize good charts. And I would encourage you to look at as many as possible. The other thing is Postmortems, not to be confused with the post Malone, but postmortems, postmortems, postmortems. I cannot preach that enough. And through those postmortems, if you could learn to separate luck from skill, which is no easy task, believe me, but if you can, then you're well on your way. Every now and then, not as much as I used to, but every now and then I'll take a setup, lose, and then I'll think, what in the hell was I thinking? So if you find yourself thinking that, it means you're learning. Next time, you won't take a mediocre setup. Now, the true enlightenment comes when you lose on a trade, but you honestly tell yourself through that postmortem, if I saw this stock again today, if I saw this fantastic-looking setup, 
I would take it again in a heartbeat. My biggest angst is when I take a mediocre setup and lose money. I don't really get that mad. I still, I still drop an F bomb, but I don't really get that mad when I lose money on a trade that I should have taken. I just shrug my shoulders and say, well, I should have taken it anyway. And I will take that next setup when I see it again. Usually when I give a speech to an uh, audience in person, I'll ask if anyone's a musician and usually somebody will raise their hand. In one case, it was an accomplished pianist in the audience. And I asked him, it's like, well, how did you become so good at playing the piano? And he said, well, I practice, you know, dumb but implied, right? Well, if you want to get look good at technical analysis, then you want to look at a lot of charts. Now, here's some of my approach to picking great stocks. You want to seek out inefficiencies. The little biotech stock that doubles overnight or has a potential double overnight. We actually have one in this week's presentation I'm very proud of. And then occasionally you can find an inefficient move in an efficient market. And this might be a well-established retail site, uh, stock that has reached the end of its useful life. And that's the horrible way of saying it, but it is. And we'll show you one of those in a few minutes. Or it could be a big cap Phoenix poised to rise from the ash. So I'm not just trading little stocks all the time. There are some cases where I will trade a bigger cap stock, but as a general statement, those smaller cap stocks are going to offer more and better opportunities. Now you have to look for clean charts, meaning that a stock tends to go up day after day after day, means that it persists, persists in its trend. But I am a little bit more lenient when it comes to commodity related stocks because the commodity themselves is more efficient type of market. In other words, it tends to chop around quite a bit because it's a crowded play deal and there are a lot of players. So I am a little bit more lenient with those type of stocks as you'll see in a few minutes. In general, I'm a pullback player, but I will trade some breakout-ish patterns in IPOs and in upcoming shows, I will show you some of those patterns that I'm trading. And then also you have to consider market conditions because all of this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Now, stocks that trade cleanly, they generally head in one direction and don't look like an electrocardiogram. They tend to persist in their trends. They go up day after day after day. By the way, there's a big psychology in why people who are very successful in their current or prior careers choose mediocre stocks. And there's not enough time to get into it today, but I'm going to explain that to you when we get a little deeper into psychology. Anyway, what you're looking for is stocks that are accelerating in trim and not decelerating. And then, of course, you want to make sure your setup is meaningful. People show me trend knockouts all the time that really aren't a trend knockout. They're not exactly what I intended with the pattern. Another little thing to look for is make sure there's no overhead supply to speak of. And if you're trading an emerging trend like a bow tie or a first thrust, you, you want to make sure. Those are coming off of major new highs or major new lows. And that just helps to ensure that the most around amount of people are trapped on the wrong side of the market or at the least have the wrong opinion. So let's go through a few of these charts. This is a farmer mystery chart. Notice that it was in an uptrend and then it began to take off and then it began to accelerate higher. Now, as I said a few weeks back when we were looking at this mystery chart, you wanted to look like the diagram on the left and not the one on the right. Now, in both of these cases, let's just assume that the stock went 10 points higher, but notice on the left side, the stock is gaining steam, and on the right side, the stock is losing steam. So very important to pay attention to what's going on on a net-net basis, both shorter term and longer term. So this is the mystery chart, it's KOD. Notice that after accelerating higher, we had a nice little knockout move, giving us an entry above that TKO bar in a stop down here, as we talked about a few weeks back. Because if it came all the way back into that prior range, then the stock might be in trouble. And then our initial profit target, as I've talked about in the money management por portion of the show, or money, ma money management episode, easy for me to say, the initial profit target is the entry plus the stop. And then I think we all know by now what happened here, but this turned into the mother of all 
setups for us. And we had a nice little trigger and the stock shot up and doubled and change overnight. Now, these are the ones that we've been waiting for. Stocks that look like this. Now, I noticed Larry Williams calls his show Real Trading, or I, I should have checked the name before I got, went live, but he has the word Real Trading in his uh, title. And I just wanted to grab a couple of my account statements just to show you that I do practice what I preach. And you notice the entries here are 2950, and the actual entry was 2940. You can see I did get a little skittage on that. So I got entries at 2945, 2950. 2950 and a few other entries somewhere around there. But then notice that when I went to take profits, I was able to get much more than that initial profit target, taking profits at 54, 54, 48, and at 73. And again, those are real trades. So here's another one. Now notice earlier, I talked about overhead supply. The stock had some overhead supply, but it was able to clear it, okay? It's accelerating higher in its trend. And then we have a very nice TKO. As I often say, a TKO should stick out like a sore thumb. And again, we had acceleration higher. So that's a good looking setup, giving us an entry right around there. They should jump out at you. It's a good way of putting it. Now, let's take a look at what's happening longer term with this stock. Now, earlier I said, hey, don't trade stocks that look like electrocardiograms. You're like, but Dave, this looks like electrocardiogram. Well, it does, but a couple of things. It's a commodity, commodity related stock. It's a gold stock. It's a very big gold stock, by the way, low price, but big cap type of stock. And it's gonna chop around a lot with the underlying commodity. But then notice over the last several months, it's improved quite a bit and it's had a really nice trend higher before it set up. So the question is, what have you done for me lately? Well, when you're looking at a chart, you want to look at what it's done most recently and then work your way backwards. So in the case of AUI, what have you done for me lately? Well, after it triggered, it hasn't done much, but that's okay. And this is where the psychology comes in. It's very hard to sit in a trade longer term that's not going in your favor, but the stock so far hasn't done anything wrong. But Dave, I thought you were a trend follower. It's going sideways. Well, it is, but I look for perfection going into a trade. And then I just let the chips fall where they may once I'm in the trade, because you have to have some sort of plan in mind. If you decide to get out of a stock, as Murphy would have it, the next day, the stock's going to double without you. And that's just life. It's much easier just to follow a plan. And again, let the chips fall where they may. Now, setups don't exist in a vacuum. You have to take a look at the overall market. So we had some big cap shorts set up a while back, and I went and pulled the S&P back in the chart out a little bit. And what was happening right around that same exact time, we had a bow tie down in the S&P and noticed that, as a general statement, it sold off fairly hard from all-time high. So the market itself could be in trouble. Now, here's a setup, and I think this was a former mystery chart. If not, I might have mentioned it on Dave Keller's show, one of his shows that I was on. Anyway, you could see we had a nice sell off and notice that it was a fairly persistent move lower. It's a little choppy in the way down, but for the most part, the stock went down for quite a while. And then we had a pullback. And this is a pattern I call a first thrust. And we were looking to sell short here, stop up here, an initial profit target down below. Now, this is a case where this is a big cap stock poised to make an inefficient move. It's an efficient stock because it's a big, thick stock. A lot of traders, a lot of players, a lot of institutions. But the beauty is, if a stock like this rolls over with a lot of players, sometimes everybody runs to the door at the same time. Now, let's back the chart way out. And you can see it was coming off of all-time high. So anyone who ever bought this stock is happy and it is a little wide and loose but notice that it can trend nicely here and there and then we had a pretty nice sell-off as i mentioned earlier now this is what happened afterwards again we have the pullback the entry the stop because we could be wrong the initial profit target and knock on wood so far so good it went down and tagged that stop 
And now it's just consolidating my trading sideways. So possibly we've caught a big picture top with this stock. Okay, let's take a quick break and we get back. When we get back, I'm gonna go through a few more of these charts, which were former mystery charts. I'm gonna show you what happened and why, more importantly, I picked them in the first place. And we're back. When we left off, we were talking about some of the recent trades. In fact, we're going through the entire portfolio, the entire open portfolio right now from my trading service. And here's one that triggered recently and then has since stopped out. But in this particular case, notice that we had a bow tie. And then sometimes with these IPOs, they come public a little too early and they form a pattern I call the die then fly they come public too early their timing is bad or the underwriter takes them public too high there's a, a whole plethora of reasons why this happens we don't have enough time to get into today but we'll explore this in upcoming issues in upcoming episodes but anyway as you can see this stock sold off fairly hard but then begins to bottom out and sometimes these ipos after dying out like this can get their act together and then make some really nice move off, moves off of their lows. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is what I call a Phoenix strategy and related to IPOs, it would be an IPO Phoenix strategy. So again, the stock comes public too early, just dies out, has abysmal performance, but then they get their act together and then begin to trend higher. So this is what happened. This is our buy. This is our initial profit target. If you want to see these actual parameters for the ones that I don't have in here, just go in and watch recent shows. And you can see we got stopped out of this. And for what I call a better than the Pokemon eye trade, we make a little money on the second half of the trade. And we make some decent money on the first half of the trade. Now, here's another one that was, and I do believe this was another former mystery chart. And you can see in this particular case, it had a nice trend higher. Now it has lost a little steam in more recent times, but when we look at the big chart, you're gonna see that this stock has gone up a tremendous amount. So I wouldn't get too worried about that simply because it was just kind of consolidating its gains before it pulls back. And again, there's our pullback entry here. Our stop is here. Remember, even though I'm showing you a bunch of winners, we do occasionally have losing trades, believe me. And you know, by the way, as a trend follower, you will spend a lot of your time less wealthy. You will be giving up open profits. You will have a lot of trades that just flat out stop out. But we chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it for, again, these are the ones we're waiting for, these great looking setups of these great stocks. And then all we have to do, I know, haha, -ha, all we have to do is follow along. My, you know, it's like, a, I think I probably said this before, but. I used to live in a house that required a tremendous amount of maintenance. And then we built new where we are now. But in that old house, my wife would be like, hey, you know, a little, little uh, pipe is dripping over here. Could you just go with your wrench? And, you know, so I go in there and go click, click, click. She's like, that's all you got to do, right? And then before you know it, I've got a big mess on my hand and I'm having to phone a friend or call a plumber or whatever. So easier said than done. But if you could just follow that plan, you'll do fantastic longer term. And of course, garbage in garbage out so like papa john i think papa john would be a great trader better ingredients better pizza i think if you're looking for better setups to begin with like some of the few things that i'm telling you today i think you do would do very well so let's take a look at the long-term chart on t and k now notice on the right side of the chart and by the way if you find a broker that lets you trade off the left side of the chart please let me know but notice on the right side of the chart that little consolidation I was talking about doesn't look like that big of a deal because you can see the stock had more than doubled over a very short period of time. And that's why I wasn't too, too worried about that slight slowing of momentum. It was more of a consolidation and more of a pullback. Now in this particular case, you can see this stock went down for a long, long, long time. Now, again, as I said earlier, this is what I call the Phoenix strategy. And I really like these commodity related stocks such as a shipper and, but more important, more, um, or I'd, I'd much rather prefer something like a, an oil stock or whatever, because shipping stocks can be a little choppy. I did a lot of research years ago and trend following was really hard to make work longer term, at least 
in stocks like the shipping stocks. Uh, educational stocks were another one that were really choppy longer term. But anyway, long story endless, notice that it did bottom out what I call like the Phoenix pattern. I actually prefer when a stock might go down and for years make a base. And that way, all that old supply gets washed out. A lot of things happen. Unfortunately, people may die and, and those stocks get sold off and the people may sell for tax purposes and many, many other reasons. But that really helps to build the base and flush out all of that supply and set the stage for the stock to take off higher. But notice that it did take off nicely higher from those lows. Now, ideally, we want to be in a little bit earlier. We want to catch that bow tie off of lows. But in this particular case, it really didn't set up. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, sometimes a stock will just move, as I often joke, unless you're Bill Cosby and have an, an unlimited supply of roofies. You know, I guess a Harvey Weinstein, but he got caught too, I guess. You can't kiss all the women. So sometimes you just have to let them go. And sometimes there just isn't a pattern there. Now, again, this is a shipping stock. And one reason I like this stock is, again, with these Phoenix stocks, it's like, okay, this stock was $50 a share. And now it's down here in the teens. My question with these Phoenix stocks is, can they return to their former glory? Now, as we talked about a few weeks back, when we talked about money management, keep in mind, we're looking to get that swing trade out of the position because we don't know if the longer term trend is going to continue or if it's going to turn into a longer term trend, I should say. And as I often say, you can't predict trends, but you could follow them forever. And that's when the trend following really, really kicks in via that trailing stop. So this is what happened. Here's our parameters here in this particular case. Now this stock, if you're looking it up on stockcharts.com, has since split eight for one. So I think that's about 500 shares instead of 4,000 shares. My math on the fly is correct. And then our entry was 210, our stop was 160. That seems like a pretty wide stop percentage wise, but that's what it called for. Give it this initial profit target of 260. And this is what happened with this stock. It triggered and so far, not going what it's going up to hit that initial profit target. So now, and I hate to use the word playing with the market's money, but for lack of a better phrase, or Charlie Kirk calls it, after looking at my money management, he calls it free rolling. So now we're free, work, free rolling. And, and here's the thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately. If you could figure out a way for your short-term trading, your swing trading, to pay for your longer term trades, your trend trades, you would own the world. And believe me, I'm working hard on that. And that's the whole, and I know money management's kind of boring. I was talking with Rachel producer earlier. I had a couple of jokes I want to throw out and she nixed them, but that's okay. It's not, she's, she's a lot of fun, but she, I know she was just trying to keep me straight and not getting in trouble. And, and thank you for that, Rachel. Uh, but uh, anyway, to me, I get really excited about the money management. I'm such a nerd. But if you could get that initial profit target out and then you have your stop at break even, the worst you could do is, is break even on a trade. And then you sit in that trade and it's possible that you could be in that trade for a long, long time. And so far, so good on TNK. Now, Rachel, if you have, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. I'm, um, I, can, I can take questions on the fly too. Will do. Right now, we do not. Okay, cool. Uh, here's CMRE. Now, this is another shipper, and this was another mystery chart. There are the parameters right here. You can see we're going to look to enter at 804, protective stop at 650, a risk of 150. Again, that seems kind of wide, doesn't it? Well, that's what the stock calls for because this particular stock is a volatile stock. Now, why did I like this stock? Well, notice that the big blue arrow points higher. I think it was Dave Keller. And I wish I knew he who he was quoting. I'll have to follow up with him on that. And he said that this mentor or whoever he was quoting likes trends that he doesn't need his eyeglasses to see. And I often say, you should be able to draw a big blue arrow on the chart. What I used to say, quoting Linda Rasky, I said it so many times people thought it was me and sort of quoted me saying it, is if you're not sure what a trend is, ask a six-year-old kid. 
So we have a nice TKO move. And again, as I said earlier on the TKO, it should stand out like a sore thumb. The other thing to notice in this chart is notice that it has gone up day after day after day. And that's what's called persistency. And mathematically, it's equivalent to linear regression. But I prefer not to use too many indicators on my chart, as you can see. And but and that's a pattern, by the way, I will be covering that in upcoming shows. And that's a really powerful pattern. People come to me overwhelmed. And it's like, Dave, I don't know what to do. There's so much to learn. Where do I get started? It's like, you know what? Pick one pattern and get good at it. Like Bruce Lee once said, he doesn't fear the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but he fears the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So start off with something like TKOs and just pick the best. Look for these persistent moves higher. Also, make sure you watch the psychology module where I talk about why successful people pick <laughs> mediocre setups, and that's going to help you out too. So anyway, nice TKO in this one, nice accelerated trend higher, and that's what I was thinking about going into the setup. Now, again, you have to take a look at the longer term big picture in this, and this is what that looked like. Now, Notice that, again, this is another shipping stock. We had a couple shippers set up. As a general statement, I don't like shipping companies because they, as I said earlier, don't always trend nicely longer term. But sometimes you have to play the hand that was dealt. And this stock looks like a ledger cardiogram. But in more recent times, as you saw on the last screen, it has begun to clean up very nicely. So it went from being wide and loose to trading very cleanly. Now, this is what happened. Notice that it did trigger. And so far, it has not hit the initial profit target, but maybe there's hope. Okay. And then, so what do we do? Well, we're not going to get out of it because, as I said before, we don't worry about so called dead money. And it's very important, again, just to follow the plan. So here we have another short. I will short sometimes. I prefer not to have to short, but I will short when the opportunity presents itself. And as I said before, that helps you to see both sides of the market. Notice that we had a little pullback here. This is a pattern I call a first thrust. Look at a short here, stop up here, initial profit target down here. And we talked about this stock previously. So if you want those parameters, you can go and look at previous shows. Notice longer term that this stock was at a pretty serious uptrend and trading very cleanly, makes all time highs and then begins to sell off. So as I said earlier, would you have a stock at brand new highs that begins to sell off? Everybody who's ever bought the stock is feeling pretty good. Now also S&P 500, if you look, was bumping up against its old highs at that point. Not that I want to short when the market is at or near new highs, but this particular case, I thought it was worth a shot. And then so far, knock on wood, it's worked out very nicely. And so far, it appears that we may have captured a big picture top. Okay, that's all for today. I want to thank everybody for watching. There's a couple of more we'll get to in upcoming weeks. But if you have any questions, you can reach me at davelander.com slash contact. And you could also reach me at davelander.com slash stock charts for my slides. Everybody have a great week. Oh, 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 oh,